and, and put a dress on them little girls. Stop having them run around looking like boys. Let me address this. You a straight up bitch when you have to talk about another man's kids. Why the fuck you talking about my children? Hey, YouTube ain't not livelihood. YouTube is Ringo's livelihood. And you know what, Ringo? I'm going to stay on your infeminate ass with that long hair, too. Uh, you sissy. I'm going to straight up. I'm going to stay on you. If you got something to say about me, talk about me. But don't talk about my kids. Do you understand that? Is it true? Tell us, Ringo. We want to know, is it all true? You, did they associate you with R. Kelly? And 11 and 12 year old girls, did you say that? That 11 and 12 and 13 year old girls, that they're perfectly fine for, 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 and ready for sex with these wicked men in this world. Did you say that? That's what you call a coward. You never talk about another man's kids. You could talk about me. You could say what the fuck you gotta say about me. But don't talk about my kids. Do you understand me? That's what a coward does. Right? Yeah, he's a punk and a coward and a liar and an evil beast and a slow belly. He is a Satan himself, a Diablo. You should be ashamed of yourself as a man. That's what a bitch does. Do you got it? Don't ever talk about another man's kids. Hey guys, before we continue, I found that 60% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. Click that subscribe button to support truth and click the like button to keep these videos populated within the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support and truth. Let's get back to it. But have y'all noticed something? Every single one of them, I've all challenged them to an open discussion on a panel. Even made it easy for them to, I actually done something I normally would never do. Because I like the type of discussions and talk like, you know, men used to do a yesterday year. Like men used to do a old times face to face. But man, I made it easy for them. I made it easy for them. I actually put them all out there. Challenged them openly to a discussion online, on a panel, so we can all have something to say and ask questions and answers, get answers. And you know what? Nobody took it up. What does that say about these people's character? Hmm? You have not challenged every single one of us. Stop being vague. Although it is evident that you are living in adultery, you and I have different doctrines which we disagree with. Between me, you, Ringo TV, C Rock Smooth, and his apostle, Geno Jennings, we have different interpretations of what the Most High requires for your repentance. I teach that polygyny is sinful. So I ask that you address the false doctrine. Because even if you didn't take Nellie, who is Eric's wife, if you didn't take her from her husband, it is still sinful for you to have more than one wife. Ringo TV does not believe this. He believes in polygyny. Okay, so the separate issues that we have with you, you need to address them one by one. In addition to that, you have offered $25,000 to anyone who can prove that polygyny is sinful. Now, this video is Polygyny is a Package Deal Part 3. And I have so much more to cover on this topic. Because what the world calls pedophilia today was lawful for women to marry at the age of 13 years under the Old Testament ordinances. Of course, it is sinful today, just like incest and polygyny, because sin is incredibly expensive. As I've always stated, as I've said before, it was once a privilege for a man to marry his sister because it was risky for him to travel to another man's house, pay him a dowry for his daughter and risk that her bloodline had a higher concentration of fallen angel blood. Adam didn't have to pay a dowry for Eve. Neither did Abraham have to pay for Sarah. Okay, so. And if you study the scriptures carefully enough, you will see that these things are the offspring of sin. Okay, the accumulation of demon DNA throughout the human bloodlines. It was a privilege to marry a young woman, a young virgin, and for a man to accumulate wives and concubines under patriarchal rule. But remember, Christ said 
this generation here that we are in is an adulterous generation. Okay, they parted ways with the covenant with the most high. Okay. So in part three of this series, we will conclude this video reading from Matthew chapter 24 and the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 28 through 30. Because Dirty Low Dow and R. Kelly Ringo TV, they like to point to women outnumbering the men uh, justifying this is why men need to have multiple wives so that women will always have a husband. And so they're assuming that God wants every woman to have a husband. They don't carefully comprehend Genesis chapter 3 and Deuteronomy 22, why the woman is to be humble. And this only happens under the new covenant because most women will not get married or remain married because they divorce far more than men, even though there are more of them, more women, than there are men. And of course, the scriptures state that God hates divorce. I want you viewers to watch to the very end, and I'll break it all down. See, the problem is, yeah. no, see, if I live like Christians, everybody would accept. That's it. Yeah. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. See, if I do that. Oh, I'm, oh, pass by greatest preacher ever lived. I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you about the greatest preacher ever lived. <laughs> That's what I think about it. I'm with Elijah. Maybe your damn God is out pursuing. That means he's taking a shit somewhere. He can't show up to the to the showdown and the sacrifice. See, the minute you condemn polygyny, Pastor Dow associates you with Christianity, which does not rebuke the modern feminist woman. And it does not teach about generational curses that plague women to this day. And they have inherited, talking about the women, they have inherited a faith deficit. Okay, the scriptures describe the woman as the weaker vessel. The modern Christian church does not address the fallen state, how the earth has a lease agreement, and all sin is not the same. Okay, the scriptures talk about the cup of iniquity, which eventually fills up in the earth. And those who are in charge of the earth are judged accordingly, to whom much is given, much is required. So, yeah, there are Christian pastors who are satanic and they collect 501c3, but Satan, being the god of this world, he set it up that way for you to champion polygyny because he likes to play both sides. But we know that God is not the author of confusion, according to 1 Corinthians 14.33. You commit an adultery. In your heart, you commit an adultery. Wicked asses. You understand what I mean? I'm trying to figure out how the hell do you look at your brother white who you say you love? Love? You say you love your brother. You love your brother. How the hell do you look at your brother white with love? Are you out of your damn mind? Where's the righteous of the law where you love y'all? Where? You understand what I mean? Where? There's no way in hell. First of all, number one, I love y'all. Number two, I ain't jeopardizing my soul. Not for no doubt. Not for no doubt. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I cannot believe this hypocrite said this. Ooh, you currently have another man's wife. <laughs> but I know we've been talking about Dowell and his adultery, but Nelly. He's just as wicked as he is, okay? Let's not dismiss the infidelity, the sin that she committed, okay? But there's more to cover in this saga between Dirty Low Dow and R. Kelly Ringo. I'll try to cover it all throughout this Polygyny is a Package Deal series to kill two birds with one stone because polygyny, or rightly dividing the word of truth, this is the only reason I talk about these clowns. Both of these devils are wicked. Both of them are cowards. So I'm going to start at Deuteronomy chapter 22. We're going to read verse 28 through 30. Okay, verse 28. It says, if a man finds a young woman who is a virgin, who is not betrothed, and he seizes her and lies with her, and they are found out, 
And the man who lay with her shall give to the young woman's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife because he has humbled her. He shall not be permitted to divorce her all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife nor uncover his father's bed. Okay, so you can see there was a penalty to pay, obviously, for a man laying with another man's wife. Okay, but even if that woman was a virgin and she was not engaged to another man, that man was not penalized for forcing himself on her. All he had to do was pay her father some money. Okay, this is the things I'm talking about. That's a package deal with the entire system of polygyny. Okay, it's all a package deal. Why is that? Verse 29 says, And she shall be his wife because he has humbled her. Why is it that the woman has to be humbled? Okay, if you go back to Genesis 3, the curse against the woman was that her desire shall be for her husband. And in pain and sorrow shall she conceive. You see that. So verse 29 here in Deuteronomy 22 is a part of that whole process that was described in Genesis chapter 3. Pain and sorrow is being without a husband as well. Okay. But the, under the law of Moses, since the children of Israel were not under captivity, they were able to practice their culture, all of their customs and the ordinances of the Most High. But in the book of First Samuel, remember before King Saul was anointed king of Israel, God told Samuel, because the children of Israel keep asking for a king, they have not rejected you, Samuel, but they have rejected me. And God went through all these curses that's going to come upon the children of Israel for that wickedness. Now to this day, that, that curse of the children of Israel requesting a king. Now this king that is over us is a matriarchal rulership. Okay. It's a matriarchal kingdom. So obviously Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 29, a man can no longer force himself on a woman. So technically she does not belong to him. His children, his wives are all in the world of the state. It's a generational curse. Now, because of this, God commanded Adam and Eve, you should not eat of the tree, nor shall you touch it, according to Eve, lest you die. The death is also symbolic of the marriage, the lack of marriage, because in her pain and sorrow and conception, God has to humble her. The woman didn't only need to be humbled in Deuteronomy 22, verse 29. What is the, because the Old Testament is a shadow of the New Testament. That's what the scriptures say. Remember, it was either Paul or Timothy or Peter who said, when the women in the church, they grow tired, they grow impatient that they're not finding a husband. Then they turn aside to serve Satan. If the woman was able to practice polygyny with the man, and the man was able to have as many wives as he wanted to, as I've stated before, then the, the bishop, who must be blameless, then it shouldn't be a blaming thing, shouldn't be something that's disdained or distasteful in the eyes of God for a bishop to have multiple wives. He would be blameless if he had multiple wives, but because the bishop is setting the standard, now this is the generational curse that's come upon the woman, her being humble. The men in the church have to follow the standard that is set by the leadership in the church and only have one wife. So it does not matter if there are far more women in the world than there are men. The woman divorces more. She aborts innumerable amount of children. She does what God hates. Okay, and I'm not saying all women, but if you're a righteous woman, you need to understand how generational curses work. Okay, all men have to die because of the one sin that Adam committed. Okay, all women 
not to be degrading or disgusting or anything. All women have a menstrual cycle because of that one sin that Eve committed with the serpent. She committed fornication and sinning against her body. She committed adultery. Okay. Adultery, part of the word rooted in the word adultery is altar. Okay. Her body was altered for a fallen angel to go into a woman is what caused that perpetual blood of impurity extracted life from the woman every kind that would produce after her you see that the penalty that the woman would have to pay in being humbled in this dispensation is most women will be without a husband that's why the scriptures say he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the lord Okay, God in his infinite wisdom knew how rebellious this woman was going to get as the generations accumulated through time. A modern liberal woman in this matriarchal fallen state is not biblically rewarded with more opportunities to marry after the accumulation of sin through the generational curses that have come upon the woman. Packaged deal of polygyny is unapologetically patriarchal without restrictions imposed by these heathen hypocritical Edomites. So what does this mean? This means women, virgin women, in cities full of women with low body counts, they must fulfill the consecrations under the law of Moses. Okay, men, this also means that men are protected by the laws of sexual morality because the law of jealousy permitted a man to put both the adulterer and the adulteress to death. Okay, all of this is a part of the package deal of polygyny. If a man forced himself on an unmarried woman, all he had to do was pay her father some money. Then he would be able to marry her. He couldn't divorce her the rest of his days. And then the matter was concluded. Okay, but the accumulation of sin caused separation from God and his standard of holiness. Polygyny was a standard of holiness, so long as they were able to keep up with the consecrations, okay, and the laws of morality and the law of jealousy, all right? A man must have his right to put another man to death for sleeping with his wife. That's part of the polygyny package deal. Okay, I'm going to conclude with Matthew chapter 24, verse 17. We're going to read through 20. We're going to read through 23. It says, let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. Christ is talking about during the days of tribulation to come. Okay, these things have not happened yet. Verse 18, and let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. Catch this now. Verse 19, but woe to those who are pregnant to those who are nursing babies in those days and pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. Why would Christ say woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days? Why don't God provide shelter for them? You see, this is a generational curse. You guys have to understand the laws of generational curses. Okay, you have to understand the curse of the woman, all right? There's also a curse against the man, but I don't have time to get into that in this video. Maybe later in this series, I'll get into that, all right? But it's saying, woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies because Eve ate of the tree and God said, lest you die. Generations later, Eve and her kind Every woman that came after her is going to have to pay for the sin of the woman, rebellion of the woman. Okay, the women who go and put men on child support, the women who divorce and commit abortions and fornicate and make deals come into covenant with this wicked devil, Esau. Okay, the wages of sin is death. All right, so. I talked about already in this video, the main point I wanted you to take from this is how is the woman humbled? Okay, according to the new covenant, 
How is the woman humble? And the way that she is humbled is that she will be without marriage. Most women are going to die alone. I hate to say that. Okay. Because of the sin. Sin is incredibly expensive. So I've already talked about in previous videos, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, the covenant, the new covenant of marriage, the sanctification of marriage, concubines and multiple wives are not covered under the new covenant. I've proven that. Okay. And I will touch on that once again later in this series. So now you have an understanding through the humbling of the woman. This is why there are far more women in the world and there are less men. And every man is to have his own wife and every woman her own husband. Okay. And I'm not going to get into Isaiah when Isaiah said, in those days, several women will cling to one man. That means multiple women are going to be competing for the marriage to one man, okay? Because the, the, the daughters of Zion, the scriptures say the daughters of Zion, which is a so-called black woman, she's proud and she's rebellious, okay? And again, I'm not speaking to all women, all right? I'm just articulating how generational curses multiply throughout the years, throughout the generations, okay? Don't let your flesh write checks your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. These guys, Dow and Ringo TV and New Breed, all these guys call themselves practicing polygyny. They have no accountability for the assignment of concubines. How do you document marriage? Val is teaching that you shouldn't even get a marriage certificate. What's what? How would you know which man, which man's wife belongs to him? How would you know which concubine belongs to that man? You have no way of knowing. There's no fear of the Lord. How would you know if you're in right standing with God through the sanctification of marriage? Again, because Paul described it in First Corinthians chapter seven. All right, but. I'm going to continue with part four of this series and just uh, stand by and let me know your thoughts.